Okay, what I'd like to look at today is Thevenin's theorem, but looking at Thevenin's theorem of an AC circuit where we have a sinusoidal source over here. Now we're going to consider RMS values really throughout, okay? All right, let's think about how we're going to do this, all right? So the Thevenin voltage, V Thevenin, what is that? Well, it is the open circuit voltage. Now, here are our terminals A and B, and this is where we would attach a load uh, if we're going to use this circuit, okay? Um, so, load is removed. Let's see what that voltage would be. Well, it's a voltage divider, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So, we've got this impedance here. Now, let's write this straight away down in its polar representation. So, what is that? That would be a 10 at an angle of, what, minus 90, divided by what? The sum of the impedances really in that circuit, which would be a 3 plus a J4, and this term over here, which is a minus J10. And that, of course, is multiplied by my source voltage over here, which is a 20 at an angle of 30, isn't it? Okay? All right. So let's go a little further with this. This seven in voltage then is 10, angle minus 90. What do we have here? Well, we have a 3. Uh, we have a plus J. 4 and a minus J10, so that's a minus J, what, 6, and that, of course, is multiplied by my source 20 and angle 30. Okay, what we need to do is convert this bit into a polar representation, so let's rewrite this, that's 10, angle minus 90. This in polar form is what? Okay, so I would like you to go ahead and do this. Check me, now, I'm right here, okay? But I'm saying that is 6.708, bit of rounding there, and my angle is a minus 63.43, and that's multiplied by 20 angle 30. All right? So finally, then, I can say that Thevenin in voltage is equal to, let's now multiply, or rather take this term, divide it by this, that gives me what? 1.49, take this angle up to the top, I've got an angle of minus 26.57, multiplied by the 20, the source that is, at an angle of 30, and if I work that out, I get my Thevenin voltage to be 29.8 at an angle of 3.43 degrees. What I want to do now is find the short circuit current. So I'm going to put a short between my terminals A, B. All right, now let's think about this. Is there any current going down here? No, it is shorted out. So really, this is a very simple circuit to deal with, isn't it? Yeah, so really that short circuit current is going to be equal to what? It's that source, which is 20 at an angle of 30, okay, divided by Basically, this impedance here, isn't it? Okay, which is what? It's a 3 plus a J4. Okay. Well, if we convert this now to its polar representation, we've got 20 angle 30. And in my denominator here, I've got a 5. And that angle there is a 53.13 degrees. And so my I short circuit then is equal to performing that division there. That is going to be a 4. Bring this angle up. And that is an angle of minus 23.13. Okay? Thevenin impedance is equal to what? It's equal to the Thevenin voltage divided by that short circuit current. And that's going to be equal to, we found that Thevenin voltage, what? It was 29.8. And the angle was, what, a 3.43 degrees. And we're going to divide that by this short circuit current here, which is 4, at an angle of minus 23.13. Okay? And so if we work this out, that Thevenin impedance then is equal to 7.45. And my angle here is, what, a 26. Let's take this guy up. That's a 26.56 degrees. Now, here I'm representing that Thevenin impedance in what a polar form. 
I could convert this really to what? A rectangular form and then I could consider what the resistive component is and what the reactive component is. Just as a note here, a reminder of what we've said in the past, phasor representation, we can talk about our imaginary axis, we can talk about our real axis here, okay? And we can talk about a vector representation of our complex number. And we can say that there's an angle here, we'll call it theta, the vertical component here is the imaginary component, and of course the horizontal component is the real. Okay. Look, if we want to find the relationship of that angle with respect to the imaginary and the real, we can simply say that, look, tan theta is equal to what? It's equal to the imaginary bit over the real bit. Okay. So therefore, theta is equal to the inverse tangent of the imaginary part over the real part. All right. Useful to, for you to continue to remember that. All right, we can also talk about our angle relationships, and we can simply say that, look, tan theta is what? It's equal to the opposite, so it's really opposite, which is what? In this case, the imaginary, over what? The adjacent. Okay, we can talk about cosine theta, and that is the adjacent, the adjacent over the hypotenuse, okay? So that's adjacent over the hypotenuse. And we can talk about sine theta as being what? The opposite here. So that's the opposite divided by what? The hypotenuse. All right. Again, useful relationships for you to remember. And it kind of helps with our understanding of going backwards and forwards between polar and rectangular. Mm -hmm.